Good morning, and welcome back to the homestead. I thought I'd take you on my little journey, <laughs> loud as it is. Every morning I, after the sun's been out for a little while and dried off the leaves of the tomato plants, I use this as my time to really get in here and um, it's the time of year to be taking all of the, the, uh, um, you know, what are they called? suckers and I also top them so that they don't grow anymore. This is like the natural top and uh, it's got flowers on it now but I probably have enough tomatoes on this plant. Uh, this is my um, beefsteak tomato row. This whole row are all beefsteaks and um, this row also has my uh, sweet peppers, my sweet bell peppers. <laughs> so generally what I'm looking for are leaves like this. Leaves with little holes. That is a telltale sign that there could be, in this general vicinity, a tomato hornworm. It could be really tiny, um, like this one. Here it is. You see it? See that little thing? So generally, once I find this uh, worm, it's so small that I just give it a squish. <laughs> now, tomorrow I'm going to come back out here and do the same thing. I do this every morning. Generally, I find three or four every day, either at this um, very tiny stage, or I find little um, white or black or colored circular tiny little balls sometimes on the back of the leaves I squish those as well but like I said I'm always looking for the the leaves with the holes in them so now that I found one I'm gonna take that leaf off um, so that I'm not looking at the same leaves every single time so I'm just gonna take these few leaves off don't worry about missing the leaves you can see on top of this tomato Oops, that was from that worm that I just killed. So, yeah, I mean, I've been doing this every single day, and uh, it's really keeping the population of these worms down. They don't get very big because I find them when they're really small. There's nothing on that one. So, you just look for the telltale signs of the holes. The You can see that this one has been eaten in other ways. There's nothing on here, but I'm taking it off anyway. Um, or the little poops. And that's how you know you have tomato hornworms. I do not plan ever again on letting them get so bad. There's another one. See? I just, I saw the little holes and the chewings on the sides. And then you turn it over and you find the worm. So I could collect them and just give them to the chickens, but they're so small. And I did see on another plant earlier before I decided to film um, a larger one. So we'll go over to that one. Okay, so here we are at the, the leaf. You can see all this damage it's done. That is not what a leaf looks like. I mean, they do have lots of weird serrated edges, but when you look at this leaf, you can see how chewed up it is. That's not normal. That's not what the leaf should look like. So, you know, like I said, you just turn it over. This one's a little bit bigger um, than the other ones I've been finding. And I'm not seeing a lot of poop down below. No telltale signs of this one. However, I am seeing one of my big beefsteaks not looking so great. However, I'm afraid to take it off because all these others could fall, so I'm going to leave it. But I'm going to feed this guy, taking the leaf off. Like I said, don't worry about it. And we're going to feed it to the turkeys. Turkey babies. Look. Look, turkey baby. Get that. Get it. They love them. They go right for them. They know what they are. <laughs> Did you 
get it? Did you get the yucky wormy? No, nope, they haven't got it yet. But they know. They know it's on there. They'll get it. Yeah, get it. There you go. He got it. He gobbled it up. <laughs> We've moved the chickshaw again. We're almost to the fields. We've been working it around the garden edge, but this is what we're going to have them tear up for the next few months while it's still warm enough for them to be out in it. But we love it, and they love it, and everybody's doing great. And I'll leave you with this beautiful view of the corn, the sunflower rows, the rows of tomatoes, my kale, and Brussels sprouts are doing great. I've already harvested all my cauliflower. Tomatoes are, there's tons of them, and they're all still green. <laughs> um, I'm getting ready to plant some more lettuce. I've, I've been working on my second bed of lettuce. It's doing great. All those lettuces from before have gone to seed. Um, the sweet potatoes are growing nicely there. We've got lots of new beds going on. Working on that, extending some of our beds. We decided we're going to extend these rows one more cattle panel width or length, so that's what I'm working on now. All right, thanks for joining us. Have a great day, everybody. As an afterthought, which is really the basis for why I'm out here so vigilantly every morning is, well, one, I don't want to happen what happened last year, and two, look at all these tomatoes I have. As a homesteader, these tomatoes are my food. They're what's going in my pantry. So I want the best crop that I can get. I have a beautiful crop of paste tomatoes and romas, uh, the best ever. And I want them to last me and Gary. So, and then all the brandy wines, not brandy wines, beef steaks. So, you know, that's our food. So we gotta care for it, right? <laughs> Be vigilant, everybody. Thank you for being here with us on our homesteading journey. If you like what we're doing, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on the bell to be notified of our new movies. From Maine Homestead Project, I'm Victoria. And I'm Gary. From our homestead to yours, have a productive and beautiful day.